Welcome to ProCAD's Electric Tutorials. Watch the entire video or use the on-screen table of contents to skip to a specific topic. Module 1, Creating a New Drawing, covers the following topics. Drawing Manager, Toolbox, and Borders. These tutorials were created using English units. All ProCAD software products support both English and metric units. The first topic in Module 1 is the Drawing Manager. When the electric software opens, we see the Drawing Manager dialog box, giving us access to projects and to drawings. If the Drawing Manager does not appear, simply click on the Drawing Manager tool in the electric toolbox. This will open the Drawing Manager. Our first step when creating new drawings is to select the standard where we would like to create the drawing. We'll use our Twin Lakes project for our sample. In our drawings area, we see the list of existing drawings, if there are any, and then there is a new icon. Click on New Icon, give it an appropriate name, and the file is created. If we right click, we can create another new file, we can copy this file, we can rename it, or we can delete it. To open the file that we just created, simply double click. As it is a new drawing, we can start it as a new schematic drawing, which is the default, or as a new layout drawing. We'll do both for this tutorial. We'll start it as a new schematic, simply click OK and a new file is created. Notice that the menu selected is set to schematic. Let's go back to the drawing manager. We'll create another new file. Again, give a file name. And again, double click it to open. This time, we'll create a layout drawing. Select the layout radio button. We now have to select a scale for the drawing. Typical scales would be similar to architectural, eighth inch equals a foot, pretty standard for commercial size buildings. Click OK, and a new file is created. Notice now that the menu has been set to layout. So it will automatically switch between schematic and layout, depending on the type of drawing that is created. Another method of creating new drawings can be done through our Standards Manager. So if we open up our Standards Manager, we go into our electric, right click and say Refresh List, we see all of the drawings and the last two that were just created. Within the Standards Manager, we can then go in and create new files. And we have the same options as we do in the Drawing Manager, where we can open that file, create a new one, copy it, rename, or delete. I'll just delete this sample. Ask, are you sure? So we can say yes. So some of the drawing management tools can be found within the Standards Manager. At any time during the drawing session, we can access our Drawing Manager dialog simply by clicking on the Drawing Manager tool in the Electric Toolbox. The next topic in Module 1 is the Toolbox. As we're in our second drawing, which was our layout drawing, you'll notice that we have a layout menu. So we take a look at our toolbox, and we can see that we have access to our drawing manager at any time. And then we have all of the tabs for all of the components within the electric software. So starting at the top, we have heat tracing. We have heat tracing lines, connections, T's, end seals, under cable tray. We can place cable trays, straight trays, elbows, 60s, 45 degree elbows, T's. We also have the different line types, typical within electrical. So we have some ground wire, conduit cable, underground cable or conduit, and then some of our basic AutoCAD lines like dash lines, center lines, hidden lines, and border lines. Under the equipment, some basic equipment, symbols, vertical fans, vertical motors, unit heaters. As well, we can use AutoCAD to create some of those if we need. Under the lighting tab, just some basic symbols for ceiling lights, beacons, emergency lighting. Under the receptacles, our basic receptacles, single pole, duplex receptacles. Under our control devices, we have things like our switches, motor starters, thermostats. Under the fittings, we just have some of the basic ones like conduit up, conduit down, flex wiring, junction boxes. Under the grounding, simple grounding symbology, the connections, and taps. Under the miscellaneous symbols, we have things like our north arrows, single tags, multiple tags, wire tags. Under the civil, are things like building outlines, doors, windows, that can be added into our layout draw. Under AC is area classifications, one through five. Under utility, 
We have our borders for adding a title block. We have revision clouds and dimensioning tools. And then finally under the changes tab, we have some of the basic AutoCAD types of changes, changing selected layers, doing our dynamic attribute edit to find out more information about a component. And then at the bottom, we can switch at any time. If I'm in a layout drawing, I can switch to the schematic menu structure just by selecting the schematic. You now have access to the schematic toolbox and the tabs and tools. So we have terminal blocks, terminal block numbering, wiring numbering, terminal block wiring. We have terminals, all the different symbols for the different styles of terminals. We have single line diagram power symbols, single line diagram controls, so all the different control symbols. Single line diagram equipment, again, some basic equipment that can be placed. Again, our line types, so we have a bus bar, panel wiring, and then field wiring. And then some AutoCAD center lines, hidden lines, dash line, and border line. Under the control schematic power, we have transformers, fuses, breakers. Under the control, we have all the different types of switches, push button switch, limit switches, time delay switches. Under the control schematic equipment, we have control lights, lights. Under the libraries, we have some input-output cards. We select that. We can actually pick the upper left corner of the card. All the different default input-output card selections from Alan Bradley to Siemens Electric. And then we can select input and output. And then the catalog number. All predefined within the Electric software. Under the lighting, pick the upper left of the panel. Single phase or three phase. Number of circuits. And it places in a default table for us automatically based on our selection. Shut down key template, pick the size, and it shows us a shutdown template pre created, and then we can just fill in the information. Under our miscellaneous symbols, again we have the north arrow, some of our tags, section balloons, flow arrows. Under the civil, we have building outlines, doors, and windows. Under the functions, we have some function identifiers. Under Utilities, we have access to our borders, dimensioning tools, revision clouds. And finally, under the Change, similar to the Control menu, we have our access to changing layers and having access to our Dynamic Attribute Edit tool. The last topic in Module 1 is Borders. Once we have created our drawing, so in this case we have created a layout drawing called TLP-E-S2, to start the drawing, we would typically go in and place a border. So under the Utilities tab, we will select the border icon. Because it's a layout drawing and it was drawn to scale, it allows us to select either model space or paper space. If we select model space, which is the default, it will insert a border and it will scale it up according to the scale we selected for the drawing when it was first created. If we select paper space, what this will do is insert the border in a layout tab at a scale of 1 to 1 and then create a viewport within the drawing that will be to the scale set with the drawing. We'll leave it at the default model space and we'll pick the default D size sheet 22 by 34. Click OK. The drawing border shows up on the drawing and it allows us to edit the attributes to fill in the title block information. Add the first line of the title, put in information like drawn by, the date. Notice there is a next button to continue to the next page of attributes. The checked by, the approval, the scale, drawing number, sheet number, revision, and say OK. And the information is added to the drawing. At any time during the drawing session, we can double click any of the attributes and it will bring up our enhanced attribute editor dialog and allows us to make changes. At this point, save the drawing. We can access some of the information about borders through our standards manager. We open up our Standards Manager, take a look at the electric. We also see the border settings. This shows us where the drawing borders are, the limits that we have, and even revision block information. These borders can be customized to match client or company standards. Another location we can take a look at is the file location, where it shows where the borders are located. This concludes the topics covered in Module 1. Please review Module 1 or select the next module.